What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Recently, a lot of you have started new gardens and you've gone with the back to Eden method, which is awesome. But when using this style of gardening, there's a few things that are important, especially while you're planting. That's what we're gonna go over today. Let's go. When it comes to growing in wood chips, there are two things that are vitally important. The first one is the application and the second one is how to actually plant in the wood chips. When you've got the application right, and you're planting correctly, your plant should be healthy, good production. As you can see, we've got a soldaki tomato here, nice tomatoes on it. We've got another variety back here, great looking tomatoes. And we've got some herbs underneath. As you can see, more tomatoes, kale, a beautiful looking kale here, and more basil. And these are just testaments to the wood chips working, to the system working correctly. And like I said, when you have the right application. What I mean by application is you want the wood chips down in layers. You never want to mix it in your soil. When you have it down in layers, you're gonna have the fungus come in and break it down. And you can see it's gonna hold a lot of that moisture in, slowly break down, and all the wood chips in time are gonna turn into humus and turn into actually food for your soil, for your plants, and that good soil structure. The second main thing to realize is how to plant. That's what we're gonna get into next. So you can see what the plant should look like. Now let's get into how we could actually get to here. When your food is as natural as it can get, when it's beyond organic, it's so obvious. Tuck knows it, I know it, the flavor is there, and he just loves doing this. This is almost like brushing his teeth too, because all these fibers and everything, they're real good for his teeth, they're good for his health, and he just loves it out here. So I'll move into the new food forest where I'm at now. We just put the wood chips down here last fall, and we're already getting a lot of production here, as you can see, things are doing great. But I've got a section where the zucchini's finished and some of the beans. I'm going to dig that out and get some new stuff planted. So I'll cut these out. A number of them had vine borers, so there's no point really in me allowing them to continue to grow. I've got new ones planted. We're always going in succession. When one thing's finished, we've got to have the next one growing. That's the idea. I'm going to show you the ones I have planted already, but let me first cut these out and get some new stuff in. So we'll get this zucchini cut out, pull the whole thing out. It still has a, a couple nice zucchini on it. We'll harvest those, but we don't want to take it up too much space and we want to get something else growing for the fall. These beans as well, they're, uh, they're doing really well, but what I wanna do is cut them out because they don't have any really more flowers, so we'll just cut them out, we'll harvest all of them. We'll make sure that we're not uh, pulling the roots out, we're just cutting them, because these beans are nitrogen fixers, so any roots left in there, it's gonna bring nitrogen for the next round of things. We'll cut all these out, pick all the beans, and then keep moving along. And when you cut them out, it makes it really easy to harvest. I don't suggest doing this until your beans are pretty much finished flowering though. And beans, like cucumbers, the more you pick, the more you get. Some of the squash are still good though, so we'll leave these plants in. This has got two nice ones that are ready. I like to take them when they're young and small, so they're nice and soft and delicious. So we'll just grab this material here, and I'll move it all into the chicken pen. We've got a closed system going here. From here, I bring it into the chicken pen. The chickens scratch it up, move it around, break it down, and that fertilizer then comes back into the garden. So it's all about photosynthesis. The more plant material we grow, we can then bring that into the chicken pen or just drop it down, allow that to turn into fertilizer and grow more food. We're always investing, we're always getting more out of it. I chose to use that word investing for a reason. Investing's a word you gotta get, especially if you're into gardening and you're into building your own soil. I heard someone say in regard to investing, they said, if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep becomes your downfall. What do I mean by that is if you're constantly growing plants, taking out of the soil, taking out of the soil, taking out and never putting back, you know, you're gonna run out. It's like a bank account that you're constantly withdrawing from. You gotta make some deposits too. We've got a nice basket of beans here. Like I said before, it's way easier to harvest it. Now that they, you can see they don't have any more flowers on them really, we let them finish up. And I can just easily pick them like this. Comfortable, maybe sitting on the back of a, of a chair or on the back of a truck or something. You know, a lot easier than getting on your hands and knees to get them. We got all the plants cut out. Now I'm just gonna pull some of the weeds that came up in here. We don't want any of these growing, especially like the crab grasses. But you can see there aren't many weeds in this section for two reasons. One, we had the plants pretty dense and pretty thick in here, so there wasn't that much light that got to the ground. The other main thing was the wood chips. You can see how thick we have them in this section to keep the weeds down. It's about uh, three, four inches. When you're planting in annuals, you want about four to six inches of wood chips. That'll really help make it so it's not too deep. But if you're gonna plant perennials, older trees, you can go six to 12 inches of wood chips, almost as deep as you want. Again, you'll notice when, when we cut this stuff out, we didn't rip the roots out. We just uh, you know, cut the base of the plants. We wanna keep the roots in the ground because that's gonna be amazing food actually for the worms. The worms are gonna eat that, they're gonna break it down, they're gonna turn into worm casting or worm droppings, which is some of the best 
the best soil amendment you can get. The first thing that we're gonna get planted here is carrots. If you're not sure what you should plant, and if you have enough time left to plant anything, what you wanna do is just go on, I use the Old Farmer's Almanac, and you can type your zip code in, that'll give you your first expected frost date. What you do then is find out what crops can grow in that amount of time. For instance, carrots, they take about eight to 10 weeks in order to grow. So we like to plant those eight to 10 weeks before our first expected frost date. And if there's other plants, like we're gonna also grow beets here, we have enough time to do that. So you wanna just do your research, make sure you're growing things that have enough time to actually finish and crop. You might be wondering why we have this board here. Using the board is actually a trick Bill Mollison talks about to help with the germination. So that's what we're gonna do. First thing we need to do though is pull back the wood chips. That's the most important thing. We're not gonna be planting anything into wood chips. We're planting into the soil. The wood chips are just a mulch. That is something you have to get. It can't be uh, overlooked. We're not planting into wood chips. We're planting into the soil. Wood chips don't have the soil structure. They don't have the nutrition that uh, the soil does because these wood chips don't really have good nutrition for the plants until they're broken down further by the, all the microorganisms, all the funguses, things like that. So we've got this section all cleared out with the wood chips. We've moved all the wood chips back, now we're down to the soil level. Now we're just gonna loosen up the soil just a little bit. We're not gonna go crazy. We're just gonna lift it up just a little because these carrots need a pretty loose soil in order to, uh, in order to continue to go down and grow. Looks like we've got a nice grub here. The chickens love these. I'll have to give this to the chicken but we're just gonna loosen it up a little bit. We're not gonna go crazy. So as you can see here, I'm not mixing anything. I'm just loosening the soil just a little bit. You don't wanna have any of the wood chips down when you're doing this. You don't wanna be mixing the wood chips with the soil. That's a no-no. We're just gonna rake this section a little, get it soft, and then we'll get our carrots in. You can see the soil is nice and damp from having the wood chips down. And when planting carrots, they're so small that uh, you actually don't even wanna uh, really put any sand over top of them or any dirt, what you wanna do is just put a sprinkle of carrots over top, then we'll put our wood over top. As you can see, this section is a little small here, and I've got a, a number of different kinds of carrots, so I'm gonna do a mix of a few different kinds. But what's a good idea also is to add some radishes in there. We're gonna add radishes within our carrots. This way we get a quick crop, but also the radishes will come up fast and mark where our rows of carrots will be, giving us an indicator of just where it is. These are a few of the carrots I'm gonna be planting. I think they'll be fun, so we'll get them opened. I'm gonna kind of stagger them, I'm not gonna do a perfect row. We'll get a few of each variety in my hand. Here's the yellow carrots. And I'm kind of doing my own little mix here, just for fun. One thing you can note on the carrots too is if you don't have that much time, check the length of uh, harvest for the varieties. For instance, this variety right here, it's only 55 days to harvest, when some of the other ones are about 70. So if you don't have as much time, you could try to plant this variety. This is the Napoli carrot. So we'll just sew these in, just in my hand very lightly. And you wanna have it bit of a delicate touch. When it comes to carrots, uh, I'm not really worried about overplanting a little bit, as long as you thin. Gotta make sure you're thin if you're planting too many of them. Now let's get some radishes in. You can see the length of days for these, only about 30 or 25 days. These will be harvested and ready well before the carrots. These radishes will also actually help to space out some of the carrots. We won't plant a lot of radishes in there. We don't want the whole bed to be overtaken by radishes. So we've got some radishes here. We'll just sprinkle down the center. We're not trying to plant a perfect row of radishes here. We're just using these mainly to help space out and to help mark where the row is here. Getting a yield while also producing a function for us. Now we're gonna water these carrots in. One thing that's important though is we don't wanna just put a, a really powerful stream of water and wash these all out of the way. We just wanna be nice and gentle. So a soft stream like this, and we're just wetting them down because the soil is already nice and moist. The wood chips made sure of that. This is just gonna make sure we start that germination process the right way. And the reason we're gonna put this board over the top is since we didn't put any soil over the carrots, they're gonna dry out quickly and they just wouldn't be able to germinate. They need to remain wet and moist. So that's what the board is gonna do. But we also don't wanna bury them too deep. Now what I could have done was plant the radishes first and then cover them and then put the carrots in, but we'll see how this works out. We wanna make sure we're uh, blocking the light and a lot of the airflow to keep it nice and moist in there. So I'll bring some of the wood chips around. I'll even put some on this side. And the reason we're doing this is to help with the germination of carrots. Sometimes they're so small, they're tough to get up. This is a method we uh, read about. We haven't tried it yet, but we're gonna see how it works out. But it was suggested by Bill Mollison, so I trust what he says. Next, we're gonna plant some lettuce. Let me show you how we do that. Basically the same thing as the carrots. Anytime you plant wood chips, first you wanna pull them back. Let's do that. Just like before, we'll pull the wood chips back. Pull the wood chips back till we're down to soil level, like you can see right here. Then what we'll do is we'll just make a little bit of a groove 
and then take our lettuce, sprinkle those right in, cover them up with a little bit of soil. Then let them come out of the ground. After they come out of the ground, we'll bring the wood chips back around them after they're grown. Let me show you a section where we've already started this. Right here is a section that I did just what I showed you. We pulled the wood chips back, but as you can see, these wood chips were a lot deeper here. We're looking at about six to seven inches of wood chips. Doesn't matter how deep they are, you gotta pull them back. We pulled those wood chips back. Then we took beans, we pushed those into the soil. Those beans have now sprouted. So what we'll do next is take some small wood chips and just put them around the base now that they're up. If you put the wood chips down, the plants are gonna have a tough time coming through it when they're germinating. After they're up like this is when you wanna get those wood chips down. You can retain the moisture and you're also gonna be feeding and fertilizing that plant as these wood chips break down. Everything you wanna do. But again, you notice how deep I'm putting these wood chips. I'm not putting them seven, eight inches around them. I'm putting about three to four inches. When it comes to annuals, as you can see, you don't want it too deep. But if you've got perennials, you can put it six to 12 inches deep, like I said, especially on your older fruit trees. So now we finished mulching these beans and they're ready to excel and continue growing. There's two takeaways from this video that I mainly want you to get. The first one was application. You never want to mix your wood chips in, just layers, just like nature does. Every fall, it drops the needles, the leaves to the ground, and they mulch just like that. The second one is you never plant directly into wood chips. You want to be planting into the soil. The wood chips are just a mulch, not a growing medium. To show you some of the credibility that the information I'm sharing with you works, I want to take a look at some of the plants. We've got beautiful saldaki tomatoes here. Nice and ripe, ready, just lush, and all different varieties also. We've got beautiful basil plants. We're getting nice harvest eating organic food. You can do this, I promise you you can. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends, and check us out on Steemit because we love posting on there. James and Tuck, we'll be right back at you real soon. We have